Okay, hello, Tom McGuire. I'm just going to review the book Not A Life Coach by James Smith. So the title of this book kind of jumped out at me a little bit. I saw it on my Audible. It came up on my recommendations and I'd read his other book, his first one, Not A Diet book, uh, which I reviewed. And this one sort of stood out to me because anyone who follows this channel knows that I do a bit of life coaching. is isn't the only thing that I do. I'm also a business consultant. I uh, do a lot of training and consultancy within social care. I've done that for years. Um, but I do do a bit of life coaching and I enjoy it and my clients get a lot out of it. So I was a little bit defensive when I saw not a life coach. I thought, oh, I wonder if he's going to try and take it apart because there is a bit of a misconception that life coaching is a bit Mickey Mouse and it's a modern sort of fashionable thing. And to be fair, when people say that to me, I do sort of agree that actually, yes, there is a certain amount of truth in that. If you're someone who wants a life coach just because you've got a bit of spare money and you don't know what else to do and you think it's a fashionable thing to do, then you are wasting your time. But if you find a good life coach and you have the right attitude yourself that you want to improve yourself and you want someone to kind of hold you accountable and kind of coax your potential out of you, then it can be really useful. I have a life coach myself and they've really helped me and I help the people who come to me and the people who come to me pay me very, very well for that because they think it's worth it and it, it it turns out to be worth it because I, I see their success going up, I see their businesses improving, I see their lives improving and I see their net worth improving and things. So it just depends that, you know, it's like anything. There are bad examples and good examples. So, but yes, this book, I, I gave it a listen and I did enjoy it. I think it's really, really good as a personal development book, actually. Um, I think if you're someone who hasn't read a lot of personal development books or listened to a lot of personal development books, this is one of those good ones. I said a similar thing about Jay Shetty's um, Think Like a Monk. And I should, probably shouldn't really compare this to that one because they are very different. But I kind of am going to compare them because they're both popular influencers. James Smith and Jay Shetty are both really popular. They've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of of followers you know they've done books they're both very successful in that respect so I am going to kind of compare the books and I prefer this one I think this one to me just felt a bit more real it felt a bit more genuine um I think James Smith is quite good like that isn't he, he kind of tells it like it is you don't get any sense of bullshit from him he just kind of tells you how he feels it is based on the research and reading that he's done and he comes across as someone who's very passionate about personal development himself I kind of look at him and I listen to him and read his stuff and I kind of think, yeah, you're kind of, you're doing, or you've achieved the sort of stuff that I'm looking to achieve myself, which is which is kind of encouraging, actually. He says that he's not actually, he doesn't consider himself to be an expert and what does that actually mean? And I kind of agree very much with that. I think this term expert is a bit of a funny one, really. He says, you know, people have you know, made me think before, who am I to offer this advice? And there's kind of um, imposter syndrome and things like that. Uh, so that was interesting. He talks about working abroad and how he got a different perspective from working in pubs and bars and kind of then trying to get corporate jobs because he felt as though he had to and kind of how much little extra money he was working for doing something that he didn't particularly enjoy and how society puts pressure on us to do these things. And I completely 100% agree. That's the sort of thing I talk about as well. How do we, we feel this kind of invisible pressure to do these things that we don't even want to do for a paycheck that we don't even find particularly impressive with this promise that it might improve one day and that what have you, we might be able to achieve this and that. And so the way he talks, I, I think, was really valuable. Um, he, he says that money makes no difference in terms of happiness, that, you know, there's an optimum and that actually it really isn't about it really isn't about money. And I quite I found the longer the book went on, the more he kind of gave some depth and kind of detail about that, which I really appreciated. He said something about how he feels that if he ever came to failure, that actually he's in a position now where he feels that he would just he would find a positive in that and he would actually kind of bounce back in one way. And I think that's kind of, for me, one of the definitions of success is if you're successful, are you the sort of person who is so kind of passionate and focused and capable that you would kind of do whatever you could with whatever you had, basically? And you might get you might get to rock bottom, someone might sue you and, you know, completely wipe you out. But you've got to a stage in your head and in your mindset where you're capable of just coming back and doing something, whatever it is, to get back to where you want to be. The journey being so much more important as well, which is something that I completely 100% agree with. That's something I always talk about. Becoming is better than being. It's this mind, this kind of Carol Dweck mindset from the book Mindset, which I've, I've mentioned before. I don't think I've reviewed that one, actually, but I've, I've read that one, which is really good. Um, yeah, so basically it's, in, it's about enjoying the climb, as Gary Vaynerchuk says, and kind of enjoying the challenge and actually being in, being present in the moment. He says he doesn't care about money nowadays, but giving value to people. And obviously that's kind of difficult to swallow to a certain extent when you know someone like him is really successful and is kind of potentially raking it in. I'm sure he does care about the money to a certain extent, but I understand what he means in terms of he gets a bigger kick 
out of someone sort of saying to him, wow, that really helped me, than actually the paycheck that comes, because he's probably just getting got used to that the same as anyone does. I wasn't overly convinced by his advice on marriage, and I think I remember him saying something similar about relationships in the first book. I kind of agree with what he's saying. I don't think that people should necessarily stay in a marriage or relationship if they're unhappy, but it almost... I think it, for me, it's almost kind of the wrong message for maybe young people who potentially might grow up kind of feeling as though relationships are disposable and that you can get divorced whenever you want and you can start again. And and, and to, to some extent, there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't think there's any harm in people understanding a bit more of the John Peterson school of thinking where actually we should kind of understand that things aren't necessarily going to be that easy all the time and marriage isn't necessarily about feeling happy all the time. You are going to have difficulties and actually you can work through that and you should look to work through that together. I'm not saying he necessarily doesn't think that, but the impression I got from the book was it was just a bit simplistic. It was just a bit like, if you're not happy, get out and move on. And even if, like I say, even if he didn't mean that, it kind of, I think it could come across that way to some people. So I wasn't overly keen on that bit. I thought that was a little bit selfish. Fantastic when he's talking about winning the lottery and how winning the lottery doesn't make you happy. And actually, if you've got the mindset of playing the lottery, then you're basically kind of betting on something that is so unlikely. I think he said one in 45 million to one in 45 million or something. Um, and actually, there are so many other things that you can bet on in terms of your own personal development and putting effort into things and trying new things that are so much more likely to make a positive change. Um, he talks about how school let him down, which is, again, something I completely relate to. But now he loves learning. Again, exactly the same as me. I kind of absolutely you know got into massively into learning in my 30s um but in school just found it so boring just being told what to learn how to learn it just to perform in a test just you know completely agree with that um talks about having your own game you know you're playing your own game no one else needs to know about it you can just set yourself challenges and little tasks and almost make life a bit of a game in terms of your goals and kind of trying to be better in one area than you had been before of kind of I don't know what it is you know necessarily fitness health whatever with your work just basically saying that no one else needs to know about it you can just have your own private little game going on in terms of your goals basically um I liked what he said about home ownership as well and how we put pressure on ourselves to have a mortgage and things and how it's just not necessarily the best way forward and I always say as well that when it comes to renting, people say it's dead money. Well, yes, okay, you might be throwing that money away. It's not stashing up necessarily, but you've got flexibility. You can move whenever you want to the, you know, you can be constantly applying for different jobs when you're when you're renting and moving to wherever those 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 better jobs are for you. And that is invaluable. And rich people, wealthy people understand that, that you, you've got that flexibility there. You don't have to completely tie yourself down to one place just so you've got a mortgage, just so you're on that ladder, you know, it's it's not as straightforward as the masses seem to think it is. And actually, there's a lot of sense as well when it comes to personal development and success in doing your own thing. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. It doesn't necessarily make it the right thing to do. But we do feel this pressure from other people and from society a lot of the time. And I kind of got the feeling that he's saying we need to get away from that. And I completely agree. He talks about the importance of having a powerful why. You know, what what's the reason you're doing things? He talks about how if someone offers him some kind of business deal, he'll want to know why they're doing it. And if they can't explain to him why, if that why isn't powerful enough, then he won't be interested. And he'll sort of say to you to go away and think about that. And that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? People want to get behind you when you've got a powerful why, when you're doing something for the right reasons, you know? So yeah, really, really good book. I really enjoyed this one. He didn't really talk much about life coaching, to be fair. He's just kind of, he's just basically sort of saying, you know, you can read and you can learn and experience and do things for yourself. You don't necessarily need, need life coaching. And I, I would agree with that. I think life coaching is very specifically for people, like I say, who probably already have a very good understanding of how to develop themselves, who are probably already at a fairly decent level, I would say, who have enough money to pay for a life coach as well, and who just want someone there to kind of hold them accountable, coax their potential out of them basically. My coach does that with me, he doesn't give me any advice, so he just basically just asks me the right questions so that I can answer my own questions, so that I have that sense of satisfaction that I'm getting there, that I'm improving, and it helps me massively, and, and, my, my, and I know that I'm helping my clients massively as well. So it's a very personal thing, but I certainly wouldn't say that life coaching is necessarily something that everyone should do. I think you've got to have the right mindset for it. But fantastic book, Not a Life Coach by James Smith. Thank you.